Hello, hello. So I have here module eight, the guided practice last question, which was 3D. I copied the directions over. So you need to be comfortable doing all of these, putting them all on the graph and labeling all of it on the graph. So I kind of piecemeal pulled some stuff into OneNote so I can doodle all over it. So our function here, negative 2x cubed minus 9x squared minus 7x plus 6. Blech. Not factored. So we're going to get to play the how do I factor this game. Not going to have to do that more than likely, but doesn't hurt to go through it. All right. Now what I am struggling with is that my touchpad doesn't work. Okay, so since we already have this in general form, let's go ahead and talk about end behavior and turning points. So the end behavior of a graph comes from looking at the leading term. So let's scroll up a bit here. OK, so we've got is the coefficient positive or negative? Yeah, my handwriting's horrible. And then the degree, which is the highest power. And this is even or odd. So even degree functions are going to look like x squared or negative x squared. So that was the positive coefficient, the negative coefficient. What they can do is, if I have higher degrees, they might squiggle back and forth a few times, like turn around the turning points. But eventually they will end or start in these directions that we're going to put here. All right, so when the coefficient is positive, we're going to see that on the right, the graph will end heading up towards positive infinity. Likewise, if the leading coefficient is negative, then it will head down. So I kind of use these like curvy arrows just to say like it finishes doing whatever its squiggle is, and then it's gonna do this. It's not gonna make like that kind of actual sharp curve, but it's a way to notate it here. Now, even functions are gonna do whatever their right side does. It's gonna mimic the behavior. Just like x squared forms a u, we're gonna see the same thing here. So if the right side went up, the left side also has to go up. If the right side goes down, the left side also has to go down. Now what I kind of do is in between them, I do this little squiggle just to say, you can do whatever it wants in there, but this is what happens on the ends. Now our odd guys have to be odd, so they're different. So if the right side goes up, the left side goes down. And then if the right side goes down, the left side goes up. Let's just put the squiggles in there. So we talked about this in class, but this is another way to see all the different ways leading terms work. So make sure this makes sense. It will be useful. OK, now for our function here, we've got negative 2x cubed. All right, so that is negative and odd. So there is our end behavior. Now, answering this question, again, I don't have.
Okay, we get to handwrite. So. Now we would also want to explain why this is the case. So it goes down on the right because the coefficient is negative. It goes up on the left because the degree is odd and it has to be the opposite of what it's doing on the right. So like the explanation is kind of backwards because we're looking at the end of the graph first, but that's the way it works. At least that's the way it works best to me. So let's just kind of notate that here. So this, let's highlight it. All right, so this is because the coefficient is negative. All right, that here. That is because the degree is odd. So it does the opposite. All right, so we've got our end behavior. Next thing we had that I highlighted up there was the maximum number of turning points. All right. So here. Max number of turning points. So this is how many times the graph can like peak up and then go back down or make a valley and then come back up. So there is a maximum number because the degree can only wiggle around so many times. So the degree is the most number of x-intercepts you can have, like that's another way to think of it. So x cubed can have at most three x-intercepts. For the graph to go through those intercepts, it would have to go up and then down and then up. So there's two spots where the direction changes. So the max number, it doesn't have to have this, but the max number is going to be the degree minus one. Now this will sound silly, but I need you to show some work. So we have degree minus one, 3 minus 1 equals 2. Max turning points, or number of turning points, just something to label it, but please put the work. Okay. All right, now we need to do intercepts and the multiplicity which will also be the behavior at those points. Yeah, okay, never mind. The downside of a new computer.
how now the touch and type works. Let's go ahead and grab that graph paper as well. There, I just copied it and dragged it down again. So x-intercepts. Well, let's do the y-intercept first because it's real straightforward. So y-intercept. So. Y-intercept occurs at x equals zero. So plug in zero for x and solve. Now because this is in general form, we get negative two times zero cubed minus nine times zero squared minus seven times zero plus six. So the y-intercept is at six, zero six. So you would want to show your work on that a little. So something like f of 0 equals negative 2, 0 cubed, minus 9, 0 squared, minus 7 times 0, plus 6. So 0, 6 is the y-intercept. All right. X-intercepts are a little more interesting. We set the function equal to zero, and normally it's factored, so then we just set all the factors equal to zero and solve, and there are our x-intercepts. This one, though, is a little uglier. Now, from my thinking earlier, I believe negative two works. So we're going to do that, and this will be a little review of module seven. So we are testing x equals negative two, and we'll use synthetic. All right, so we have negative 2, negative 9, negative 7, and 6. All right, bring down our first one, negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Then we add and get negative 5. Multiply and get 10. Add and get 3. Multiply and get negative 6. Add and get 0. Yes. Cool. So x equals negative 2 is a 0. So negative 2 is 0. The point is an x-intercept. So let me type that as kind of the conclusion from this. So we just showed x equals negative 2 is a 0 of the function. So negative 2 comma 0 is an x-intercept of the function. And not that we need it, but that would be x plus 2 is a factor. And in fact, we can actually go ahead and write like what we would have. So we would have x plus 2 times negative 2x squared minus 5x and plus 3. Now what we're going to do is factor that. It does factor because there's no way we gave you ugly intercepts to graph. 110% um, Google factoring calculator. Type in the three numbers. It gives you the factors. I'm fine with that. I don't want you guys to spend a lot of time doing the factoring. I will say, though, this one is going to look a little ugly with that negative on the x squared. So I am going to factor out a negative 1. We still have x plus 2, just 2. Now we'll have positive 2x squared plus 5x and minus 3 now. So now I'm going to play the 
run through numbers really, really fast in my head. So one of these will be 2x. One of these will be x. Uh, this is going to be the 3, which means we're going to have the 1 there. All right, I want to make the 3 positive, which means it's 2x minus 1. All right, there are all three factors. So the negative one up front, meh, it's just telling us that this is um, ending negative. It's just the same as our negative coefficient. We don't really care what the number is. We just care if it's positive or negative for that end behavior. All right, so here, if I set each of those equal to zero, I've got x equals negative two, which we already had. Then I'm also going to have add the one divide by two. So we're going to have one half and negative three. So those are our x intercepts. Those are the zeros. Then negative two comma zero, one half comma zero and negative three comma zero are the x-intercepts. Now in our factored form, they all have a multiplicity of one. You do need to state this. Is one. So the graph will cross at each intercept. All right. So we've got our behavior. We've got all our information. This is enough. We can actually go over here and start graphing. All right. So here's where things get a little more interesting. So first, I'm going to make that bigger because my handwriting is shaky. So let's go with our x-intercepts. I'm going to go with blue. So negative 2, 0. And then at positive 1 half, 0. And at negative 3, 0. OK. Now eventually, we're going to go back and label all of these, but right now, I don't have room for that. And I want to see where the graph goes so I know where to put the labels around it. Nope, nope. Negative six was our y intercept. Two, four, six. All right. So I got my three points. Now this guy. That does not make sense. Wait, was it positive? Oh, it was positive six. There we go, driving myself crazy. All right, so two, four, six. So what was happening is I was trying to connect the dots in the directions I knew the graph was going to go, and I wasn't going through the y-intercept. So I knew I did something wrong. All right, now, remember our end behavior from before was left is going to come from positive infinity, and then on the right, it's going to head down towards negative infinity. Now I'm putting these kind of close to the graph because this graph is going to be very steep. Okay, so these two intercepts are close together, so it's not going to go that much further down. This point, though, it really doesn't matter as long as you're putting the turning points where they need to go, and they need to go between the intercepts. So our graph is going to come down like this, turn around, go up through that y-intercept, and then come down there. And it's okay if your graph is wiggly. 
Now, what we want to label now, though, is our intercepts. So I'm good with like x intercept, one half zero, x intercept, negative two zero, x intercept, negative three zero. And up here, y intercept, zero comma six. So that horribly wiggly graph is the graph. We stated the maximum number of turning points. We stated the end behavior and y on both of those showed work. We did our x-intercepts, which took way too long, and we did our y-intercepts. You won't have to do this division on the quiz. I just picked the last one because better to do the ugliest. All right, I'm going to stop this so it stops being so long.